uh, I think it's good for us to just keep taking some calls from listeners. So let's see if we can continue to take some calls. I'm just having a difficulty getting one caller to air here. Uh, we've got a little difficulty with our phone system. Let's see what we can do. Let's take this caller from New South Wales. Hello, welcome along. Hello, you there? Yes. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are the very first part of the segment, which was about rape victims. I really I appreciate that as being a separate issue. Graham, what you've done is fantastic. I am the prime example. I am white, pasty, but I'm female. I've had two abortions. They weren't from rape. And I believe that the majority of abortions aren't from rape. So this is my voice to perhaps women who feel that they don't have an option. They do have an option. Please reconsider. Had I known what I know now, I would have reconsidered. Wow. What, um... me, what happened to me from those two abortions lasted has lasted to today and they they impacted me because of the medical procedures so what happened i used to get fainting i just faint probably the day it happened the procedure and now and again i almost faint that's continued it's not as bad as as directly after them now we're talking 20 years ago all right another thing that happened what they do, I understand this might be graphic, but before the procedure, they put an injection into your cervix and that has caused directly after those two procedures, my first wanted child, um, I had a late miscarriage. Now, the doctor never said it was from those injections, but I truly believe that's what that was from. Wow. Let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, get a little thought or two. You're raising some powerful points, and the fact that you are a woman uh, does actually uh, give weight here. And because of your experience, having had two abortions, and you've felt after effects, uh, Graham, what are your thoughts for our caller from New South Wales? Well, I think the first thing you said is very important to point out that uh, very few uh, women become pregnant through rape. And uh, so when people want to raise that as a justification for abortions more generally, the fact is that a uh, very small number of occasions that it actually occurs, that conception occurs as a consequence of rape. And even in those small numbers where it does occur, it still doesn't justify ending the child's life. But your l later point about um, abortion affecting uh, carrying of pregnancy to term and so on, studies have shown that that is the case that uh, it can affect a woman's ability to carry uh, a pregnancy through the full term and uh, in resulting in increasing numbers of children being born prematurely. And so, yes, abortion not only has psychological and emotional effects on women, but it can have an emotion, uh, physical effects which uh, affect future pregnancies. Uh, while we have our listener on the line and uh, appreciating that you've called in anonymously, we don't have a name attached, and so... I want to thank you so much for being so frank and open about your own experience here. Do you mind if I ask you uh, around the reasons why you had those two abortions? Sometimes we think of coercion as someone manoeuvred uh, things into place and you felt like you had no choice or uh, some even more lately you'll hear uh, having abortion almost as an alternative to birth control. If I ask you if the reasons for your own abortions, are you able to share something with us? Absolutely. It was... Now, don't forget, I grew up in an era where I didn't know you could question it. And again, if if I could, you know, be who I am now back then, I would never have done that. But what's really sad about my story is those two pregnancies were for my husband to be but in in what I thought was an honourable action for him he was in a really hard situation he was going through family court I, again this is a really hard issue 
but his his previous wife was trying to get existing kids off him and in the end she was shown to lie through court and he got full custody and what's so interesting is that in the end he said no I want to go back to our previous arrangement but we have the kids 50-50 that's just again touching on why I felt at that time he wasn't ready emotionally we were so careful but I just kept I fell pregnant twice um, and I didn't want to complicate his life already. And I, again, it was so hard for me because I'm the kind of person that when people said at 14, what do you want to do? I wanted to be a wife and, and be, be a mother. And so, you know, it's not... Sometimes people make decisions based on other reasons, and that was my reason. And another thing I've, I've asked forgiveness for is that first time I walked up to, I had to travel uh, two hours into the city. I was walking up to the the medical place, and this old, this lovely woman, she had a picture of the baby. She showed it to me, and she said, "You have a baby. Please don't go into that building." And ninety nine percent of me was like, "I don't want to go in there." But at the time, I was young and I wanted to keep going out of what I thought was an honourable thing to do for my husband to be. And I just, I want to thank her so much. And even worse, what I did was I complained about her after because I thought it made my decision even harder. But really, it was a light. It was, she was one light just there saying, please reconsider so anyone out there, a bit like the, the call of um, in Jeeveson in Tassie, thank you. Thank you for being there for women like I was. Because had I just been in a different situation or my husband had been, we would have had, you know, many kids. And to give a good story at the end of this, so my third pregnancy, I was left in a hospital again closer to the city because they knew that I was having this baby too early. They just left me there. They gave me no support. I ended up having the baby alone. I was so scared that he would be born alive. And that was so traumatic. And they never said, this is because of your two abortions that your cervix hasn't carried this child. I never had any backup and I never had any information. And by that stage, I was married. And that caused such grief. And, and the end of the story is that I had a son, another son after that. Again, I went to two specialists. None of them mentioned that possibly why. And I had him at 32 weeks. However, I was in bed in hospital. I couldn't get up for two months before. And they still didn't know when he was going to be born. And then you go through all that, you know, you have to express milk. And this is to any woman who's listening. You have to express milk when you have a preemie baby. It's really hard. And and mind you, if you have a, a, a really late pregnancy, no one told me my milk came through in two days. That is so traumatic as well. Look... But I want to thank you, you so much. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think anyone listening is going to regret uh, hearing just that little more of your story. It's it's moving. It's powerful. Uh, let's just, uh, Graham. Perhaps there's more callers coming too. But uh, a final thought for our caller from New South Wales. Yes. Yeah, so I think uh, your story illustrates just how important it is that centres such as Priceless Life, as we have here in Brisbane and are in many cities around Australia provide information and support to women in circumstances like yours. And we just need to make sure that everybody realises these places are there and willing and able to offer the help that women need. And so I would encourage all listeners to support groups like that. I want to thank you so much for being so open and sharing those thoughts with listeners today. 1-800-316-316 to join in our conversation today. 